You're listening to a message presented at New Market Christian Church. We're located at 300 South 3rd Street in New Market, Indiana. We meet for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and for worship at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning. If you do not have a church home, we'd love to invite you to join us here at New Market Christian Church. And now, a message by Dr. Gary Snowden. Total transformation. Uh, we're going to be examining the story of a guy by the name of Saul, who had another name. Does anybody know what that was? You guys are pretty good. You already got it down. There's Saul, who later became known as Paul. Now, Saul was in need of a major transformation. There was no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And he got one through the power of Almighty God. Here's kind of what happened, just to fill you in. As the church was getting its sea leg, so to speak, I mean, it was stabilizing, some of the religious rulers, man, they didn't like the fact that the church was growing by leaps and bounds. And they wanted to do something to put a stop to it. So they began to stand in staunch opposition to the message of Jesus, to the message of God's grace. Now, one of those religious rulers who were standing in staunch opposition to Christianity was a well-known Pharisee by the name of Saul. Saul was running around threatening the followers of Jesus. If you keep preaching that message, you're going to pay. If you keep preaching that message, I'm going to make you suffer. In fact, he had already been involved in the execution of Christians by this point in time. He had literally been involved in the execution of a man by the name of Stephen who was simply preaching the good news of Jesus. In fact, he stood by and looked over the cloaks of those who were throwing stones at Stephen in order to take his life for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me show you what I mean with just a short video clip. It's how it could have been. I wasn't there. So I can't tell you exactly what it looked like, but this might give us just a little bit of an idea. Wow. Saul, standing there, holding the cloaks of those who were throwing stones at Stephen, giving up his life in order that the gospel could be preached. Now this same Saul who held the robes of those stoning Stephen was heading off to round up Christians for a similar fate over in an area called Damascus. In order to be able to put some teeth into his journey to that area, Paul went to the high priest, and he said, I'd like you to give me letters to take with me to the people of Damascus to let them know that I have your authority to round up believers and bring them back here so that they can stand trial. And in many cases, face the same kind of thing, or even worse, than what Stephen faced. And these letters would show that he had their support, that he could do whatever he wanted to do as he rounded them up and brought them back to Jerusalem to stand trial. Saul was ready to go all out in his persecution of Christians. That's where Saul was. You talk about a vile person killing Christians. That was this man Saul. Rounding up men, women, and even children who claimed to believe in Jesus Christ. But God had different plans for Saul. He had a lot different plans for Saul. God made it clear when he set Saul off to complete his new ministry, when he put everything in motion, God made it clear that he was going to use this vile man in overwhelming ways in order to promote Christianity. Let's take just a few moments to drop in and see what happened to Saul as he was on his way down to the city of Damascus to round up believers. Well, when Saul finally regained control of his faculties, when he finally came back to the realm of the living, if you will, came back awake, he opened up his eyes, and what he saw was nothing. 
Can you imagine that? You open up your eyes and you look, but you really don't see anything. We call that being struck blind. That's exactly what happened to Saul. When he met with Jesus, he was struck blind. His lack of vision was so bad that he couldn't even make it to Damascus on his own. His traveling companions had to take him by the arm and lead him down to the city of Damascus. When he finally got there, he waited for three days. He waited and waited for three days. He wanted Jesus to tell him what was coming next, but Jesus had him wait before he told him what he needed for him to do. During that entire three days, he didn't eat anything or drink anything. He just simply prayed. He prayed that God would reveal to him what it was he wanted him to know. We learn later that he spent this time specifically saying, Jesus, I want to do what you desire of me. I have met you face to face. Dear Lord, provide for me the information you promised. He wanted to know what God had in store for him. While Saul was waiting, while he was fasting, while he was praying, God was working. In the same town, just a short distance away, there was a dedicated disciple named Ananias living there, wanting to follow God as well. Well, God came to this man by the name of Ananias in a vision. And he said to him something Ananias wasn't exactly wanting to hear. He said, I want you to go over and talk with Saul. (laughs) Ananias knew exactly why Saul had come to Damascus. He was in no hurry to go. Let's take a minute and see what that might have looked like from the perspective of Ananias. Well, as soon as Ananias had placed his hands on Saul... We're told in Scripture there was something like scales that fell off of his eyes in order that he could once again see. Saul could see. Now, I know what this feels like. For a long time, my left eye, I was blind in it. I could only see light and dark. And then I went and I had a surgery done by Dr. Morthy. And I come home and had it all patched up. And then a few days later, I went into the bathroom and I took off that patch. It was blurry, but I could see again. And I stood there and I cried. Because when you're blind and all at once you can see, it is huge. This was huge for Saul. God was getting his attention in a big way. I tell you what, it feels really good when blindness is taken away. I think it's interesting that a guy who hasn't eaten or drank anything for three days does what Saul did. If I hadn't eaten anything or drank anything for three days, and all at once uh, God had answered my prayer and I had gotten my sight back, my first order of business would be, where's the pizza place? I mean, now... (laughs) Obviously, I mean, it's just that that's what I would have been thinking, you know, where's the food? But that's not the case with Saul. That's not what floated his boat. The first thing Saul wanted to do was to go and be baptized. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to go and be baptized. Now, doesn't that make you wonder why? Why would somebody who's not eaten or drank anything for three days make the first order of business going and getting dunked in water rather than having a pizza. Now, here's the thing. I think there's an answer to this question, and it can be found in Acts chapter 22, verse number 16. I'm just going to read it. It says there in that verse, and now what are you waiting for? This is Ananias talking to Saul. And now what are you waiting for? Get up and be baptized and wash your sins away, calling on his name. In essence, finish what you started. Put the seal on it. Put the ring on your finger. Let everybody know you're going to be following Christ from this point on. You be baptized. Saul wanted to be cleansed and filled with the Holy Spirit more than food itself. 
He wanted his sin to be cut from his heart. He wanted the Spirit of God to live in him and guide him. Saul wanted to be transformed into the grace-covered servant of God that he had been called to be. Once he was baptized, now get this, he looked for the pizza place. I don't know if they had pizza back then. But once he was baptized, he went and got him something to eat. And boy, did it help. Because he felt stronger. And he was ready. He went right out there and spent several days with the believers in Damascus. It didn't take long for Saul to begin doing exactly what God had called him to do. He headed to the synagogue. And whenever he got there, he started preaching the good news of Jesus. Jesus came to earth. Jesus spread his arms and died. Jesus was buried. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus is going to prepare a place for us. And Jesus is still alive. And I know he is because I met him on the road to Damascus. You're talking about a powerful message. It was a clear and powerful message. Saul had been transformed by Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God. I'll tell you what, that threw people for a loop. I mean, just a few days before, he was rounding up people, getting ready to round up people to take them back and have them killed, guess what? For preaching the good news of Jesus. For believing in Jesus. And now he is preaching that message himself. This man really threw people for a loop. I mean, if you were a Christian over in the city of Damascus, Knowing that Saul had gone to the high priest and had gotten letters to make it possible for him to legally come and round you up as a believer and haul you back to Jerusalem to stand trial. Well, if you knew all of that, what would you be thinking? I know what I'd be thinking. I'd be thinking, man, do I trust this guy or is this some kind of covert operation to find out where the Christians are so he can haul us back and do to us what they did to Stephen. That's what I would have been thinking. And that's what a lot of folks were thinking. They were afraid that when he had uncovered where all the true believers were, he'd just haul them in. But that's not what happened. Saul got better and better at sharing the good news of Jesus. Saul, with his knowledge of the Torah and with his knowledge of Jesus, Saul, with his first-hand experience of meeting Jesus face-to-face -face after his death, burial, and resurrection, Saul began to prove that Jesus was indeed the promised Messiah. Friends, here's something that we've got to never, ever forget. Jesus came into this world to save sinners. Saul's a perfect example of God's saving grace. He was murdering those who followed Christ. And yet Christ extended to him grace and mercy. God transformed and called him into full-time Christian service. God allowed him to become his spokesman, if you will, to the entire known world. If Jesus was willing to transform and use Saul that later became known as Paul, don't you think he can transform you and me too? Well, let me check this out. How many of you have murdered somebody? Now, I'm not talking about in war, it's to be expected there, but how many just went out in cold blood and murdered somebody? Now, I'm thinking probably none of us has done what Saul had done. And yet, Saul was forgiven and used in a mighty, mighty way. We need to ask God to give us a makeover like the makeover he gave Saul. We need to, to stand like those who have gone before us and boldly proclaim that Jesus Christ is our Lord, our God, our Savior. Who knows? Who knows what God's going to use us to do? Who knows but what this parking lot event coming up will bring dozens of people to Christ? Who knows but what Randy Alice's uh, testimony about his dealing with cancer and keeping his faith, who knows but what that testimony will change lives? Who knows but what our testimony of what we're going through or have gone through will make a difference in the lives of others. We've got to say, God, here I am. Use me. The fact is, just as with Saul, God's Spirit will keep working on us so we become all that God's called us to be. 
Now, God can get her done because Jesus is Lord of all. No matter what you've done, he can erase it, he can cleanse it. God can get her done because he is Lord of all. If you are ready to let Jesus change your heart and life, now's the time to come. As we stand and as we sing, Jesus. You've been listening to a message presented by Dr. Gary Snowden, minister at New Market Christian Church. We would love to have you come join us as we seek to worship God, love one another, and reach out to our neighbors. He is Lord of all.